Russia has been experiencing significant technological pressure since 2022 as a result of the imposition of large-scale sanctions. This pressure is characterized by restrictions on the supply of equipment, materials, and software, as well as the potential loss of access to foreign supply chains. Pre-existing issues in the microelectronics sector have been made worse by these factors. The industry encountered major challenges prior to the implementation of sanctions. Domestically available manufacturing processes below 180 nanometers were limited, and chip design and production were heavily reliant on imported components and foreign solutions. The current plan aims to significantly close these gaps by encouraging the creation of local materials, electronic design automation software, and skilled workers, while also boosting local production and enhancing technological independence. Let us start with the strategic initiatives and key documents. The strategy for the development of microelectronics in Russia until 2030, which was developed by the Ministry of Industry and Trade in 2022, is a critical component of this effort. This strategy is a concept document that delineates the objectives, key problems, tasks, and proposed measures for developing the sector. It is officially titled Foundations of State Policy of the Russian Federation in the Field of Development of the Electronic Industry for the Period Until 2030 and Further Perspective. The strategy is complemented by roadmaps and subprograms, such as the Roadmap for the Development of Domestic EDA Tools by 2030. This roadmap is designed to target Russian software that is capable of circuit design down to 28 nanometer process nodes. Subsidies, preferential loans, tax exemptions, and mechanisms to regulate demand for domestic products are all forms of government support, primarily through state procurement. The strategy also establishes precise objectives and measures, including the forecasting of market growth, the expansion of domestic production shares, the increase in production capacity measured in wafers per year, the scaling of facility proportions, and the development of the workforce. Now we will discuss the challenges the plan intended to address. Several significant obstacles facing the sector have been highlighted by the Ministry of Industry and Trade and other sources. Russia is lagging behind global leaders in certain semiconductor process nodes by 10 to 15 years, indicating a major technological lag. The dependence on foreign technology remains significant, covering the importation of EDA software and materials such as silicon and high-purity compounds. The domestic manufacturing capacity for semiconductors that are less than 180 nanometers is insufficient. The microelectronics industry in Russia is not attractive to investors due to the high production costs and the difficulties associated with establishing a competitive environment. Furthermore, there are significant workforce shortages, including a lack of qualified engineers and insufficient technical training. So, what are the 2030 benchmarks and objectives? The development plan establishes ambitious objectives in a variety of domains. The objective is to modernize existing facilities or establish new fabs to produce circuits at technological nodes of 90 nanometers, 65 nanometers, 28 nanometers, and 14 nanometers in process nodes and production. Russia's objective is to establish a completely operational domestic EDA ecosystem that is widely used in the design of 28 nanometer chips by 2030. The plan also aims to reduce dependence on imports, establish research and development centers, develop fabrication facilities, and increase the proportion of Russian-made materials and equipment. Through 2030, there are plans for sizable state investments, subsidies, and tax benefits totaling hundreds of billions of rubles. The objective is to increase the domestic chip proportion in Russia's total consumption to approximately 70%. Through universities, industry partnerships, and new institutes, workforce development encompasses the expansion of engineer and researcher training. Now, we will discuss the support measures that are either in place or scheduled. In an effort to facilitate the strategy's success, 
Several support measures have been implemented or are expected to be implemented. Subsidies for research and development, low interest financing, and tax reliefs comprise financial incentives. In state procurement processes, the government prioritizes domestic producers. Strategies, decrees, laws, and roadmaps have been implemented for priority areas, such as EDA tools, from a regulatory perspective. Infrastructure investment is concentrated on the establishment and modernization of fabrication facilities and research centers, and the development of supply chains for critical materials, including chemicals, wafers, and equipment. The expansion of university programs, the retraining of current personnel, and the promotion of collaboration among research institutions, industry participants, and academia are all components of the effort to establish the workforce and scientific base. Let's talk about the milestones and timeline. The strategic framework and legal environment were established between 2022 and 2023, and initial funding was introduced. It is anticipated that government support will increase from 2024 to 2025 as a result of the launch of first manufacturing initiatives around 90 to 65 nanometers, the development of domestic EDA tools, and the increased demand for Russian-made components. Production capacity scaling and future mastery of 28 nanometer technologies are anticipated from 2026 to 2028, in addition to the establishment of early export opportunities, the enhancement of product quality, and the reinforcement of supply chains. The objective is to achieve a significant decrease in technological lag, the establishment of competitive domestic production, the majority supply of the internal market with domestic processors, and limited international competitiveness by 2030. The first tangible outcomes may be observed within the next two to three years, with a more sizable technological convergence anticipated by 2030, as per the president of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Gennady Krasnikov. What are the weaknesses and risks of this plan? The ambitious strategy is accompanied by a number of risks. Sanctions that prohibit the importation of critical tools, substances, and licenses continue to restrict access to advanced equipment and materials. The construction of fabrication facilities that are capable of producing at nodes below 65 to 28 nanometers necessitates a significant amount of time, expertise, and capital. Despite the expansion of university programs, the development of high-level expertise requires quite a bit of time, which is why workforce deficits remain. Potential bottlenecks in management, financing, or roadmap delivery are among the program execution risks. Moreover, the global competition is intense. Even if Russia makes technological advancements, it will be difficult to compete on cost and quality with industry leaders such as TSMC, Samsung, Intel, or China. Let's now look at predictions and projections. By 2030, the microelectronics market in Russia is expected to treble, with domestic chips satisfying approximately 70% of the national demand. In a more optimistic scenario, the market volume may exceed 10.5 billion US dollars, while it could reach 8.34 billion US dollars in a baseline scenario. It is expected that the government will allocate hundreds of billions of rubles to the development of electronics and microelectronics between 2025 and 2030. What is the degree of realism in the plan? The feasibility of the proposal is supported by a number of favorable factors. Concrete actions have been initiated, such as the implementation of roadmaps, increased funding, and initiatives to create domestic EDA software. The strong political and strategic commitment to attaining technological sovereignty is reflected in the support of internal demand through import substitution and state orders. Nevertheless, Russia continues to face major obstacles including the lengthy process of constructing factories and perfecting technologies, the potential for sanctions to obstruct essential inputs, the uncertainty of cost competitiveness as a result of Russia's smaller size, and the potential for inefficiency, mismanagement, or corruption to impede progress. In conclusion, 
the scope of Russia's microelectronics development plan through 2030 is ambitious. It aims to establish a comprehensive legal and strategic framework, secure supply chains and the construction of fabrication facilities, develop domestic EDA software and scientific capabilities, and improve workforce training and retention. Additionally, it will assure state support and substantial investments. It will be important to obtain dependable materials, maintain steady research and development centers, develop effective Russian EDA tools, and make progress in producing fabs at sizes smaller than 90, 65, and 28 nanometers. If Russia is successful, the technological gap could be substantially reduced by 2030, although global technological leaders are expected to continue to dominate. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.